Welcome to the next chapter in uh, circuit analysis. We were discussing the Laplace transform and in this particular unit, we will focus on integral differential equation. So we are going to see how the Laplace transform and inverse Laplace transform together will be useful in obtaining the solution for the differential equation. The Laplace transform we have already covered in the first few lectures and now how the Laplace transform is useful for integral differential equation that we are going to cover in this particular unit. Laplace transform is useful in solving the linear integral differential equation. So whenever we have a combination of integral term and the differential term, generally we co convert the integral term to the differential term and obtain the pure differential equation to get the solution. Using the differentiation and integration properties of Laplace transform, each term in the integral differential equation is transformed. So we have already covered the various properties of the Laplace transform. We have seen how the properties are being used to convert the time domain to frequency domain using the Laplace transform. Here, the initial conditions will be automatically taken into account. So, if the inductor or the capacitor which is having the initial current and the voltage and its first differential term that will be automatically taken into account. We will then solve the resulting algebraic equation in the S domain. So, the integral differential equation will be converted to the algebraic equation and obtain the solution. So, we will get the solution in the form of algebraic equation solving rather than integral differential equation. We then convert the solution back to the time domain by using the inverse Laplace transform. So first the Laplace transform is used to convert the integral differential equation to the frequency domain and that will give us the algebraic equation and then we will use the inverse Laplace transform to get the solution in the time domain. Let us see one problem to understand how do we use the Laplace transform to solve the differential equation problem. So here in this particular problem where we have a second order differential equation in the function of voltage. So we have d2 vt by dt square plus 6 dv by dt plus 8 v of t is equal to 2 u of t under the condition that the initial condition is given that the initial voltage is 1 volt and the first differential whenever we will be having first differential we will be putting 1 dash and second differential we will be putting 2 dash. So the initial conditions are the initial voltage is equal to 1 volt and the first differential of the voltage is equal to minus 2 volt. So we have already seen how to solve these differential equations second order differential equation in the time domain. Now we will be seeing how these differential equation can be solved more easily by converting it using the property of Laplace transform. So in order to convert the differential form d by dt, we will be using one Laplace variable s. Whereas if you have the second differentiation, then we have d2 by dt square, we will convert it to s square. The voltage equation which is in the time domain we will be having V of T will be converted to capital V and then we have the S domain so we have V of S. So here D2 VT by DT square we can write it as S square Vs because we have the second differential term involved minus S of V0 minus V dash of 0. In order to take into account the initial conditions in the second order form. Now the second term we have which is 6 dv by dt so we will take 6 out and then dv by dt can be converted to s into v of s minus v of 0. Here the equation is in first order so we are having only one term here equation is in the second order so we are having two terms and the third term which is 8 v of t we can convert as 8 v of s and u of t that is the step input the Laplace transform of that will be 1 by s. So multiplied with 2, we will get 2 by s. Now we will substitute the initial conditions which are given to us and we will get one equation which is a function of v by. 
of s. We will rearrange this equation in such a way that we can get the values of the coefficients a, b and c which we have seen how to do that in the partial differential equation form. We have already discussed this in detail in lecture 13a and 13b. So now the time is to determine the values of a, b and c constants so that we can apply the inverse Laplace transform. So we have already covered in the previous lecture how to solve the values of a, b and c to determine it from putting the values of s equal to 0, s equal to minus 2 and s equal to minus 4 in the equation multiplying with s into v of s, s plus 2 into v of s and s plus 4 into v of s. So this we have discussed in more detail in the previous lecture. So we have gone the values of a, b and c and that we can put it in the voltage equation with the values of a, b and c in the numerator and the denominator we can have the function of s. Now we will be putting the inverse Laplace transform and term to term basis we will be computing the inverse Laplace transform that will be giving us the voltage in the time domain and then we can multiply it with a step input to indicate that the time is greater than 0. So hence we got the equation in the time domain solving the integral differential equation through Laplace rather than solving it in the pure differential equation. The next uh, problem that we are going to take is to solve the response y of t in the following integral differential equation. So in the previous problem, we were not having the integral term. Now we are having one integral term also. So equation is dy by dt plus 5y of t plus 6 integral 0 to t y of t dt. So here the initial condition is given y of 0 is equal to 2. So if I take uh, the Laplace transform of each term so dy by dt will become s of y of s minus y of 0 because it is in first order then 5y of t will become 5y of s and whenever we will be having integral term it will be converted to 1 by s so here y of t dt which is integral term has been converted to 1 by s multiplied with y of s and there is a constant term 6 which will be present in the equation the laplace transform of u of t will become 1 by s. Now this equation whatever we have got it that we will be converting it to the partial differential equation form and try to obtain the values of a and b constant that we have discussed in the previous lecture itself. So we will be getting the values of a and b by solving the partial differential equation uh, in the form of minus 3 and 5 and once we put it in the equation of y of s now the time is to apply the inverse Laplace transform to get the solution in the time domain. So we have got y of t that is the output in the time domain multiplied with the step input u of t. So we have seen how the Laplace transform is very useful in solving the problems that involve integral differential equation in the circuit problem. So generally AC circuits where we have inductors and capacitors that involve the partial differential equation, we will be using the Laplace transform and the inverse Laplace transform to first convert the form from time domain to frequency domain and then back transform it to the time domain solution. So this completes the lecture 13. We have uh, four set 13A to 13D and see you in the next lecture. Thank you for